the one group that continues to be very good, and for all you guys uh, who swung uh, VRTX a couple of months ago from this 108 level, you know, excuse me, 208 level, you know how, how good these biotech swings have been. Matter of fact, the last one. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly slash weekend update. Hope everybody is doing well. Three day weekend. Um, I think I can speak for everybody, right? No matter if you're a perma bull, perma bear, or uh, perma sheep, or whatever the hell they call it. Uh, hope everybody needed it. Get a nice little uh, three-day rest, a little three-day uh, rebalance mentally. Uh, market's starting the year off on a negative note. Uh, two weeks in a row now, negative readings for the indexes. Uh, again, I personally don't believe in the whole uh, wives tale of uh, first couple of weeks are going to set the tone for the whole year. Uh, this is the stock market. It's been completely different now for the last five, seven years. It was for the first uh, 22, 23 years of my career. Markets are disconnected, okay? It's just it's very, very obvious. And if you look at the indexes, uh, you're probably going to see a lot of uh, neutral imbalances in a lot of names. A lot of, I'm sure for all you guys who are investors, you're gonna notice a lot of uh, your stocks kind of not really doing anything. Uh, up a little bit, down a little bit, maybe drifting a little bit lower. Uh, if you're an index observer, and again, I use uh, the indexes for guys, you're gonna, you're gonna realize that you know, a lot of indexes, you know, the S&P, uh, the, the NASDAQ 100, right? The S SPY, the QQQs, they're, you know, they're kind of in the middle of the range. They're just you know floating down and then just when they're about to get big technical damage, they kind of spike back up and everybody gets excited again. And then two days later, they start drifting lower. So when you look at your favorite stocks, you're probably gonna see uh, middle of the range, delta neutral towards negative and bias. And that's kind of where we are uh, going into the new week. That's kind of where we are uh, for the first two weeks uh, of the year. But the most important part is, again, just keep a level head. Uh, again, the word chop, right? The word chop factor comes in only if you're expecting one side of the market to succeed and you get your balloon popped. When you know everything's in the middle of the range, you really have no expectations. That's your first clue to kind of scale back a little bit, right? You don't need to go full throttle. Again, when you look at your favorite stocks, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Amazon, right? It's been kind of drifting lower than right, right when it's about to break down, spikes back up again. Uh, you got your Microsoft defending the bottom of the range here three times in a row and you get excited again. Oh, it's about to go up, triple bottom, it rolls back over again. Uh, Tesla has been a you know, really phenomenal trader uh, for a long, long time, for many, many years, you know, had a big, big run up, had a big, big gap, gap down, uh, drift lower, then you have a lot of days that are rebounding, then engulfing two days worth of selling, only to break down, only to recover. So it's kind of a mess salad, right? Mess salad with a lot of names as well. Uh, Netflix just looks like, you know, for the exception of that rebound uh, on Friday, it looks just just drifting and drifting and drifting again. Uh, they kick off earnings on the 20th of this month. It's going to start uh, kind of the tech earnings for uh, the first quarter. Last week we had the banks report. They really did nothing. You know, you had Wells Fargo uh, reporting. Uh, stock has been really, really good, but the earnings are really nothing, right? You had Citibank. Uh, you had Citibank, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan. You know, again, the, the, the earnings itself were fine. You know, had a little, some a little bit had positive reactions, some had negative re reactions, but there's nothing to really uh, to turn to uh, in the forecast of the economy and saying, all right, the banks are the difference if the market goes up or down. That's not, it hasn't been the case for a long time. For us, it's all about technology, especially if you're a subscriber to this channel, this YouTube channel, or just follow me on Twitter. You know how important the NASDAQ 100 is. And the question is, do they rally ahead of their earnings going into this week? Again, to be determined, there's nothing in the charts that will turn around and say, yes, you have to be long Tesla ahead of earnings. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. There's nothing that turn around and says, you have to be long Apple ahead of its quarter. You have to be long Amazon. Remember, Amazon now, uh, has has uh, disappointed two quarters of in a row. So it's it's very very important to kind of take the market right now at face value. Um, you know the first thing I've learned many many moons ago when I first started trading. Number one, 
the market doesn't make sense. Good news is bad, sometimes bad news is good, and vice versa. So expect the unexpected and take everything for face value. If something comes out with good news and they sell the stock, the news doesn't matter anymore. The stock becomes bad. So it's it's very, very important to kind of go into this week or kind of going into the next week to always have that neutral balance uh, of thinking that anything could happen, uh, that anything will happen, uh, that the Fed will continue to give us headline after headline after headline and say absolutely nothing, right? I think we, we could all understand that. And again, if I was a drinker and uh, every single time there was a headline uh, with the Fed, and it feels like there's a headline with the Fed now every 30 seconds. I would, if I had to take a, a literally a shot of vodka, uh, I'd be drunk by the open. So it, it's too much information, not enough movement, not enough action with the Fed. So the market is kind of stuck in delta neutral right now. Um, I think if you're going into this week with a bias, I think you're going to be very, very disappointed. That again, most of the stocks are in the middle of the ranges. Uh, the semiconductors, if you look at any you know any kind of guiding light because because the semis have let us up and they have let us down uh you know there's some names that look very very good when you look at the semiconductor space you had some pretty good numbers uh come out of taiwan semi uh amat looks like it's like wants to go you have clack it looks like it wants to go you have micron it looks like it's about to go but the stocks that we trade right the stocks that have really really aggressive day-to-day uh, average ranges like Nvidia. Nvidia is like a, you know, it, it's it's really like an oddity right now. It just doesn't know what it wants to do. It had this really really big run and this really big down. It's now it's lagging the rest of the semiconductor group. Uh, you look at AMD, right? Kind of the same thing. AMD had this monster monster run uh, with Nvidia. Now came back in with Nvidia and kind of just sitting there trying to figure out what's next. And you see. All this cluster, whether it's a chart on AMD or whether it's a chart on NVIDIA, you see all these trees in the forest. You see all the supply. So the, the bulls are not getting enough aggression for them to start reclaiming the 50-day moving average. And the bears are not getting enough fear or not enough control for them to have technical damage uh, below rising support. So we're, we're kind of in, again, in a mismatched salad. We're kind of in all over the place. And this is where you have to turn around, especially if you're a technology trader. Like, for example... Thursday night's video, if you guys remember Thursday night's video, I, I was sell by. I said, what, what, where are you going to find, so, you know, where are you going to find such really, really good value on the, on the, on the, on the upside? So we gapped down on everything. The Dow closed uh, down 200 points. The Nasdaq had a nice little recovery throughout the day, but like Tesla was down 30 pre-market. So any short that I wanted from the previous day, it was already down 30. So nice reversal back to the upside. But again, it's kind of stuck in Delta neutral, not here. Uh, not there. But I, I think the technology space, if it's not the semiconductor space uh, with like an um, MU that looks pretty good, if the semiconductors continue, looks like a like an AMAT or CLAC or LRCX, I think you have to kind of leave the other the other names in you know just kind of alone. And when you look at uh, all other groups, you're seeing weird symbols showing a lot of strength. Matter of fact, if you guys remember on Thursday, we saw really good moves in names like Ford, names like AT&T, right? Look at the Xerox chart. Look at the Xerox chart, right? Look at the Z. What year is this? Ford? Xerox? Right? AT&T, the dividend stocks are waking up. The one group that continues to be very good, and for all you guys uh, who swung uh, VRTX a couple of months ago from this 108 level, you know, excuse me, 208 level, you know how, how good these biotech swings have been. Matter of fact, the last one, it's still an active swing, was this, this Amgen, right? If you guys remember, we talked about Amgen for a couple of weeks, and now it's just finally starting to expand to the upside, finally accumulating uh, and confirming this 231 level. I think the value in a weird way for all you guys who are swinging these biotech names, there's some good looking charts. Let me give you a couple of plays. Look at this BMRN, right? Look at this BMRN, long distribution. This is gonna be uh, like VRTX. This is gonna be like Amgen. It's not gonna be a day trade. You're gonna be up $2 in the stock. You're gonna be down $2 in the stock. As long as it doesn't close, Below the, below the previous day's range, you're going to be okay. You have to stay in these things for weeks, but when they finally do confirm and they start going, there's gonna be a lot of value in this thing. So keep an eye on this thing for this week. BMRN, long channel, uh, going back to November 22nd, if it finally closes above it, hey, maybe this thing could start waking up. Look at a name like INSEE as well. 
right? Look at NC. It looks like if you look at Amgen's chart, right? Take a take a quick mental snapshot of this, right? You see all this supply here, right? It's underneath supply. Look at Amgen's chart, right? Amgen. You see how it was standing all underneath supply and then finally got above supply? So look at NC, right? Same same thing. You know, you, you, you're sitting there. Uh, again, it's going to be, it's going to take weeks to finally for this thing to play out. It's not going to be a, a day trade. But for all you guys who've traded the VRTX or swung the VRTX and swinging the Amgen, watch NC, watch BMRN. That's where kind of the value is right now with most of technology sitting in the middle of the ranges again you're not going to find it you're not going to will your way for amazon to come out of a channel it's either going to come out of a channel or it's not so you have to be very very patient with technology um i am kind of bullish on the semiconductor space again like we talked about the microns the amats of the world but in a weird way if that is not your niche if that's not your sweet spot you almost have to be almost pedestrian like to kind of sit there and wait for your sweet spot because again the hardest part about trading a Tesla, parting, trading the Nvidia, if they don't give you clean channels, if they give you clean channels, those are the best stocks to trade. If they just sit there and channels bouncing up and down, up and down like a ping pong game, uh, right? You're not going to get any value, and that's kind of where we are right now. Look at old, talk about old school. Look at Goodyear Tire, right? Talk about AT and T, Ford breaking out. Look at Goodyear Tire. This is a long, long distribution. Again, this is not going to be a day trade, but for all you guys who are daily swinging charts. Look how long the distribution is. The longer the distribution, uh, the better, the, the better, the higher probability it's going to come out of its channel. So, you know, keep an eye on this thing for this week. Looks, looks pretty good. Even a name like UNVR that I have no idea what this thing is. Univare Solutions. I've never heard of this thing. Look how long the distribution is. It's going back all the way back to November the 8th. So there are there are channels, there are daily charts that have a lot of really good value. They're just not really technology based right now. So if you are a technology trader, like you are, like like I am, and especially trading uh, daily channels, yeah, you got to be patient. Matter of fact, I was so patient on Friday. I didn't even trade on Friday, right? Everything once we gapped down and I just couldn't find any value back to the downside, back to the, to the upside. There was no value for me. But but again, that is the discipline. Okay, you don't. You're not going to get. You're not going to get cake every single time for dinner. You know, the most important part is. Put yourself in a situation that you are in control. Markets open, that's cool. Market stocks are moving, that's cool. Remember, every stock moves, okay? Every stock goes up and goes down. But most stocks are not tradable. So when you have absolutely no edge, it's not a sign of weakness, right? It's not a sign of weakness to turn around and say, look, this is a kind of a big mess. It's Friday ahead of a long three-day weekend. You know, it's a sign of maturity, and that's exactly what you want. Again, there's a big difference between an uneducated trader talking about, well, it's cash is a position, let's sit on your hands. Okay, you try sitting on your hands for two, three months. That's a sign of, I can't trade both sides of the market. But when you have a day that you could clearly see that your initial game plan, for example, from, for Friday, my initial game plan was downside channels. We gapped down so heavy that there wasn't, enough, there wasn't enough meat on the bones and a lot of these stocks kind of started bouncing in the middle of the day. It's okay to sit it out, okay? It's not a big deal. Remember, it's your money, guys. You don't need to sit there and and trying to convince yourself to pacify your ego to put your feet into the fire if there's no edge there's no advantage who cares leave it alone forget about fomo it's jomo it's the joy of missing out you don't care what happens in the market if you're not getting a 95 mile an hour fastball straight down the middle you're not swinging for the curveball or the screwball or the slider in the dirt you're waiting for that slow pitch right in the middle and again you might not get it today you might not get it tomorrow, but you will get it. And if you are disciplined enough to get it, wait for it. And you, you sit there, you're not going to prostitute your money or deviate from your process. You're going to have a long, long, really, really fruitful career. If you sit there like every single day talking like on a social media basis, talking about every single day is an opportunity, everything that this and everything is that there's a party here and there's a party there. You're going to put yourself, you're going to do everything possible to sabotage your career because you know, right? You know, subconsciously you are doing things outside of your comfort zone. And that's what happens when you start justifying the means because the market's open. Again, we don't trade the market because the market's open. We trade because we have value. So going into uh, this week, you know, I, I, I want to see which way technology blends. I'm obviously going to watch uh, some of the semiconductors, especially uh, for early dips into rising 60 minutes support. But I, I kind of want to get a feel. Do they want to run up technology ahead of, of earnings? Remember, uh, Netflix reports on the 20th, right? Today's the 17th. So we're off today. So they report on the 20th. 
It's going to kick off earnings season. It's going to start setting the tone. And the following week, obviously, we got the Super Bowl of earnings, Amazon, Apple, Google, uh, Facebook, Microsoft, and everything in between. So we're going to get a good sense of where we are uh, going into the second month of the year. But for now, we're kind of in a holding pattern. Uh, but that's okay. Remember, just say to yourself, that's okay. It's my hard-earned money. I'm not going to play just because the market is open. I'm going to wait for my spot and don't deviate. In the meantime, you got some pretty attractive active swing potentials here with BMRN, uh, with NC, with GT, with UNVR, even Boeing. Even Boeing looks really, really good. Like, look at Boeing, right? Boeing looks really good. Had a big, big run here. It got rejected at supply right over here. If it starts putting in a base above supply, maybe it could wake up uh, into go into the 230s, right? So again, not everything is right for everybody. Uh, not one size does not fit all. Everybody has different niches. Everybody, niche, niches, niches, niches. I never understood how to pronounce the damn thing. But uh, everybody has different areas of comfortability, and that's the most part of this, most important part of this business, being comfortable in your skin, not in mine, not in somebody else's, be comfortable in your skin. Guys, God bless, stay patient. If you feel value, again, allocate your money uh, with extreme confidence. If there is no value, there's nothing wrong with waiting. Guys, have a great day, have a great, great week, and with God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.